Thank you, and I apologize for the term gimmicks. Do we have a chance to dim the lights that shine directly on the screen for the benefit of the audience? Thank you. Um, that's better. Uh, am I actually in the way here? I feel like you. <laughs> but yes. they love to see yeah. you too, I guess. <laughs> Okay, there's my disclaimer, and there may be some bias because I'm um, one of the projects that I still follow is work on uh, navigational devices uh, together with uh, Carl Stort's company, so this can be my bias here. I will touch on three points, not gimmicks, but what I consider very helpful things. Me personally, when I operate, I was always a bit frustrated in looking at the real image, my endoscopic image, and then for navigation I would have to turn to the corner of the monitor or to another uh, uh, monitor, etc. And I want precise information and no other confusing information on the uh, screen. One of the problems that most of you who work with navigation uh, do know is Sometimes, and that applies for all the systems, the deeper you go into uh, the space, say posterior table, sphenoid, uh, clivus, etc., that your system allegedly becomes inaccurate. As you can see it over here, uh, hopefully you can see it, I hope that you can see it with that light here. No, that pointer doesn't work anyway. Um, you can see that the tip of the instrument, the crosshairs, are clearly through the clivus, so intracranially, for about three millimeters. Despite the endoscopic image, where you see the tip of the tool, clearly tells you, no, you still are in a safe confinement up there. So what's wrong? Has the system gone inaccurate? It has to do with the mathematical algorithm. I will not go into details. That's inherent with that. Normally, this would mean off with the draping, re-registration, whichever way you do it, then possibly even re-sterilizing, putting everything on, and then try again and see whether your re-registration has helped. One of the features I love very much is what they call the intraoperative <laughs> Uh, refinement or correction or re-registration. You have a close-up. You see the little red circle which gives you the marking of the, or the marge of the inaccuracy, and the tip is clearly intracranially. Now, you, I can't get that thing working. Where did I put it? Okay, the batteries, thank you. Uh, the system, some system, this system has a feature where on your command and responsibility, an assistant grabs the mouse and pulls the crosshair, yellow here, to where you say this is exactly where the tip of my endoscope is. And if that is done, you verify it. Your assistant clicks a button, a certain icon that takes less than two seconds. And this point now is exactly where you say, this is where the tip of my instrument, my navigated tool is. It's working, it's working. thank you very much. Um, so this is, okay, now we are precisely here. It is my responsibility, your responsibility, but that does away with all this nasty re-registration, etc. and that can be repeated as often as you wish. That's an example where somebody was massively uh, off track here. That's pre, and that is post-intraoperative refinement. So that's a marvelous tool. The second one is, of course, there are situations like in this patient, whom you all know, many previous operations, close to no anatomical information at all, and this is what you see bilaterally on each side. Polyps all over, no anatomical structures, you can design no cell or whatever, it's one of those masses. Sometimes here, the skull base is decalcified, and even with tactile impression, it is not very clear. This system has a feature where you can, you, the surgeon, 
mark danger areas, either one spot where the anterior ethmoidal artery would exit, the anterior genu of the carotid siphon, the bulging of the optic nerve, or here I marked the entire anterior skull base with little dots. This is my responsibility that I am correct in this. So you can't blame the company, the system, etc. So here, the ethmoidal roof was marked from the front to the back. Now, you may have seen if I get close with my navigated tool here, as long as I'm further away than five millimeters of any of those points that I use to mark a danger area, the optical display is green of the navigated tool. If I go closer than five millimeters, it turns orange, yellowish, and if I touch one of these points, it is red. And in addition to this optical information, I have a acoustic information, which I'm not sure, no, I can't run here because I can't get the cursor there. So you hear a bing, a click, you can decide that. So you have an optical and an acoustic information that you are approaching one of these danger points. So that is surgery that uh, Dr. Leunig in Munich did. That case, we've been there together. That's the real thing now. You go in with your navigation, put it there, and you see that's about a centimeter of polyps, difficult to get an anatomical feedback. Now, that's still green. If it gets closer, it turns orange, and when you touch it, the danger zone, it turns red, and you hear a bing or a click, whatever you decide. This helps or may help significantly up there. Number three, my favorite, is I've always dreamt of why can't I design a path on the CT scan, we all can, that I see in my endoscopic image and forget about navigated tools, but that path should be in my endoscopic image. And if I design the path on the CT in a correct way and would like to end up in the frontal sinus, I should be able to follow this path through polyps, blood, whatever, even without navigated tool. But for the creation of the path, I am responsible. That has taken a while, difficult task for the engineers. And this was one of the early, that is end of the surgery. There is that path, which I had designed on the CT. You see it's still a bit shaky. Uh, some technical problems, but that path ended in the frontal sinus. And so once you arrive there and see that end of the path, you know, that must be the frontal sinus. And these were the early surgeries we did. These are just some stills. And the engineers built in a couple of other features. You see that path now in the reality. Of course, it's it's not there, it's virtual. Your instrument can go through, but you see it. That's a marvelous technical uh, algorithm up there. And they show you what you see with your scope. This is a zero degree scope. You're looking straight forward. So if you say, why don't I see this part of the pass? Well, because it's a buff. So you need to switch to a different, an angulated scope, 45 degrees here, and then you can set the points up here. This was my decision there. Should I have preferred to go behind one cell in front of the bulla or through? This is my individual decision. So that system does not prescribe what instrument you should use, what surgical technique, but it shows you the path that, based on the CT data, you consider uh, the safest up there. And these are just some examples. The same applies for maxillary, if you need it for there. So here you can look in, and you can nicely see that. The latest version now, which we've not put on patients yet, is another technological step ahead. You've seen the pass 
on cadaver specimen here, injected one, so it looks a bit weird, into the frontal sinus. And now look how stable that path is. Whatever you do surgery, whatever kind of manipulation you perform, that path sort of hoovers in space. And please note, with all these, not a single navigated instrument was used. Not a tool, one. But that's only for the assignment. So here we do the typical cadaveric dissection up there going on and just follow that path. And I've designed it here to go through the oncinate. That's what you can do on the CT scan. And then go up to the uh, frontal sinus. Can somebody back there from audiovisual try to advance the, uh, the video a bit? Uh, apparently, no. Yeah, okay. That's good. And you see, Ansinet is gone. My path is still there. And whether I'm to the left or to the right with my endoscope zero degree, which you can see from here, I can follow that path. Now we have the bulla here. And I can go on, advance again. Good. And advance again. A bit. That's good. And now you can follow this as you designed it. And those of you who's been there in the very morning now see the Ansonet Buller bar, the leaflets of the Ansonet, etc. So this is one of the possibilities that we go up with. And if we see now, advance a bit, if we see now that final in the last dot of the path, can you jump in a centimeter fashion on the sliding bar up there? OK, and run again. Sorry for that being a bit clumsy. So this is lateral to the Ansonet Buller bar up there. I designed the path up and let it run to the very end. And we go into the frontal sinus. Here we are mimicking polyposis. So we put just some foam into the cavity, removing it because we can't see through. But the path is there. And as long as I've designed the path, remembering if I move no more than five millimeters in the vicinity of the path, I am absolutely safe. But that's my responsibility. And here, um, we're removing the fake polyps. Fake news, we all know, but we didn't have fake polyps so far yet. And uh, so these are the last movements right up there. That aspirator, nothing is navigated. You see that path hoovering like a Ariadne thread with the difference. We don't want to get out of there. But in there, and there's the path. I can even go through the path. And now I follow it up, 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 up. And the closer I get, the clearer that becomes magically how the technicians do that. And there is the very end of it. And if I've designed this, into the frontal sinus. Once I see that, I know that I am in frontal sinus. So that is some, and, and that applies, of course, you can do it for the sphenoid. This is now a pass to the sphenoid, left side. It's still on the cadaver. It's still on the cadaver. There's a small superior turbinate up there. And we're going up, 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 OK? And here you can see that the, in this cadaver, the natural ostium was closed, so I couldn't see it well here, where I put the point. But if I follow the shaft of that pass, I can see now the final end point inside sphenoid sinus. Sphenoid is very easy to reach, but this is only as a demonstration right up there. And you could label, combine this with others, like mark the uh, uh, carotid artery or others with it, or the optic nerve, etc. something that we did in this case. So you can see those structures up there. But whatever you decide, you have to be responsible for. So here, we mimic a surgery that does not bypass or go between opposing mucosal surfaces. And I've designed the path through the roof of that uncinate leaflet. And that brings us right into frontal sinus. So we need to learn to trust what we have designed there 
And for me, the fascination is it's all on one monitor and you wouldn't even need the uh, CT information as long as you see you can trust uh, that pass up there and you see shine through that posterior end of this already. So thank you very much for your attention and <laughs>